Hello everyone. Today we are going to start our next chapter of biology that is the fundamental unit of all living things. Now what is this fundamental unit of all living things? Had it ever strike your mind? Yes, of course it is cell. Because we have been knowing this from our last few classes that all the living organisms are made up of cell. So be it a bacteria, be it an algae, be it a plant, be it an animal or be it a human being. Every organism on this earth is made up of cell. So it's a basic or the fundamental unit of all living things existing on this earth. So that is this chapter all about with the internal details of the cell and its components which we are going to read in our further classes. So let us start our chapter the fundamental unit of living organisms. The fundamental unit of life, cell. Have you seen him before? Do you know this man? Well, he is Robert Hooke, who in 1665 discovered the cell in a cork slice with the help of a primitive microscope. But unfortunately, the cells which he discovered were not living. So, it was again a new scientist. The name of this new scientist was Anton van Leeuwenhoek, who in 1674 discovered living cells from a drop of pond water by the help of the microscope which he had made. Although that was a primitive microscope, but the modern form of microscope which we are nowadays using in our lab, that is a compound microscope, has got its inspiration from Leeuwenhoek. So, with the invention of the microscope, Scientists got to know the cell in complete details and they put forward the cell theory. Two German scientists, Slaleden and Swan, put forward the cell theory which states that all the living organisms are made up of cell. It also states that cell is a structural and functional unit of all living beings. This was later on modified by yet another scientist the name of this scientist was Rudolf Virko, who added to the cell theory, who said that new cells arise from that of pre-existing cells. To understand how does a cell looks like under the microscope, let us do one experiment, one activity. Today we are going to do this experiment of um, seeing the plant cell under the microscope. For this we need one onion. And uh, what you need to do is that with the help of a knife, you will have to cut the onion into half. After cutting it, then what you need to do is that you have to just remove the outer peel. Okay. And then from the inner surface of this fleshy leaves, take out one fleshy leaf from the onion like this and then this is the convex surface of the onion and this is the concave surface of the onion so what you need to do is that you have to take out from this inner surface that is the concave surface with the help of your nail you can just take out the peel and uh, if it is not coming out then you can use this forcep and just uh, catch the peel with the help of the forcep and just pull it. So you can see that a thin peel is there. Immediately you have to transfer it into the water. Okay. Alright. Now next what you have to do is that you have to take one slide, a clean slide. And this clean slide you are going to place in a surface. And with the help of this dropper you just take one drop of water and put it in the center of the slide like this and uh, then what you need to do is that you have to take this peel from this peel you have to take out a small section so the peel is big so let us see we can tear a small piece of the peel from this Okay, so here we have taken out one peel and this peel we will be transferring it with the help of this needle. Into this drop of water. 
okay you can see this uh, closely that this is the peel in the drop of water now what we need to do is that we have to put some uh, coloring agent which is the safranin okay so very little and then with the help of this needle you have to mix it well so that the peel gets stained properly okay once the peel has become colored then you have to take this as a cover slip okay this is a cover slip and just put the cover slip in slanting position where you have put the specimen and with the help of this needle slowly and gradually just put the cover slip on the specimen okay now this is ready to be viewed under the microscope and when we will see it under the microscope what kind of cells it will be that i will show you next so now this is the onion peel cells under the microscope you can see how closely they are arranged with a prominent nuclei in it sometimes a single cell is an organism which is capable of doing all the life activities say for example amoeba it's a single cell but it is capable of performing all the life activities by itself whereas in case of multicellular organisms like human beings the body is made up of a number of cells which assume different functions in it and that is how the multicellular organism function the unit of measurement of cell is called micron in si unit although cells are microscopic but there are some cells that are big enough to be seen with our naked eyes these are the egg of an ostrich which is the largest cell in the world next is a algae which is found in sea it is 10 cm long similarly the shape of the cells also depends upon the function they perform like in our body there are number of cells isn't it now these cells have different shapes according to the function they perform muscle cell is spindle shape neuron is just like a cord then sperm is like a tadpole etc depending upon presence or absence of nuclear membrane organisms are of two types prokaryotes and eukaryotes prokaryotes are the organisms whose nucleus is not having a nuclear membrane so we call it as nucleoid and eukaryotes are the organisms whose nucleus is bounded by a definite membrane likewise the prokaryotes have cell organelles which is also not bounded by unit membrane which is found in case of eukaryotes that was all for today's class i hope you have understood about the fundamental unit of living things that is the cell the initial stages of course and in the classes to come we will be understanding the internal details of a cell